oh my goodness, last week's bliss block about killed me. So I'm really hopeful that this week the block is going to be a little bit easier. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we're going to put together block number three for the Bliss Quilt Along. This is a block of the month program that started shipping in the sew sampler boxes in April 2021 and will end in March 2023. So if you are getting the sew sampler boxes, you're already getting these patterns. You can sew this along with me if you pull fabric from your stash or stop by Fat Quarter Shop's website and pick up the kit. If you are not a sew sampler member, you can still do this either by buying the kit and the patterns or just by buying the patterns and pulling fabric from your stash. All of the information for how you can get the patterns and the fabric will be on my website and I will link to that page in the first comment down below this video. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to put together block number three. But as I've mentioned previously, these are not my patterns, so I'm not going to give you the cutting instructions. Instead, I have starched, cut, and labeled my fabric according to the pattern instructions, and that's where we're going to pick up. So if you haven't done that yet and you want to sew with me, pause the video here, go do that, and come right on back. Block number three does look a little bit simpler than block number two. This is what we're going to be putting together when everything is all done. And oh my goodness, I'm so happy to see a simpler block to assemble because I think I need a break after last week. I've already got all of my fabric prepped. I'm ready to get sewing. So let's dive in. Step one is going to want you to grab all four of your fabric B rectangles, which are here and then eight of your 12 fabric A squares, which are here. And we're gonna use the stitch and flip method to put one of the fabric A squares on each of the two opposite ends of the fabric B rectangle. And they're gonna be situated so that the seams are running parallel to each other, which just means we need to be very careful about how we orient our fabric. We are going to use the stitch and flip method, which means the first thing that we have to do is draw a line on the back side of our fabric A squares going from corner to corner on all eight of those. And then we're going to grab one of our squares and one of our rectangles, and we're going to put these right sides together. We want to make sure that the line we drew starts in a corner and comes up to the middle of the long edge of our fabric B. We're going to stitch just one thread to the right of this line and we're going to do that for all four of our fabric B rectangles. So I'm just going to go ahead and stack everything up so it's ready to go to the machine. Now I'll come over here and stitch this together. Now the pattern says to trim a quarter inch away from that seam that we just drew and discard the excess fabric, but I like to move my fabric over so that I am going to stitch about a half inch away from that seam that I just took and I stitch another line. And I like to do that on all four of these because what that's going to do is give me a secondary half square triangle unit that I can use in another project somewhere else. I feel like those pieces are just a little too big to just toss out. Now that I've done all my stitching, I am trimming away the excess one quarter inch away from that line that I drew corner to corner. And now I've got four bonus half square triangle units that are already sewn together 
They just need to be squared up and put into a bonus project somewhere else. We're gonna go ahead and flip these open with my finger just to get them out of the way. We're not gonna stitch on those areas, but I do want to make sure that they are folded back because the next step is gonna to be to put another square on these rectangles. And if they're not folded up and away, then I could get them caught in my seam the next time I sew. So what I'm gonna do next is take another fabric A square and I'm gonna orient it so that the line that I drew from corner to corner runs parallel to the seam that I just took. I'm gonna do that on all four of my fabric B rectangles. And just like I did before, we're gonna stitch just one thread to the right of that line. I learned a really neat trick to test your stitch and flip to make sure that everything is accurately sewn together. It goes like this. I take my piece of fabric where I have sewn both pieces together and I just put my fingers in between the two layers and I finger press right on that seam that I just sewed and I'm looking from the top and from the back to make sure that what I actually flipped over lines up perfectly with the fabric that's already there. If everything is lined up perfectly, then I know I sewed that stitch and flip accurately. If this is too small, that means I was not to the right of that line enough. I may have been right on the line or maybe even a thread or two to the left of the line or more. If this fabric is bigger than what the back looks like, so if I flip it around and you see something like this, then it means I was too far away to the right of that line, so you need to sew a little bit closer to the line that you drew. I find that flipping over and making sure that everything looks good before I trim away my excess helps make sure that my pieces are going to be sized up properly. Because I have just done a stitch and flip on all of these rectangles, I'm actually not adding any additional size to these rectangles, I am just replacing the yellow fabric that used to be in the corner over here with some white fabric so that I can make a different shape. And so for that reason, whatever my rectangles were when I cut them, maybe they were three by six, maybe they were 10 by five, whatever shape they were before, that's the size that they should be measuring up to after I've done my stitch and flip. So. I've got all four of them sewn. They all four look like this. And now I'm going to press them with a hot dry iron. Now that those are done, we're gonna do the same process, but with some different fabrics. This time, we're gonna grab our fabric C rectangles, which is this really pretty green. We're gonna grab our remaining four fabric A squares and all four of our fabric D squares, and we're going to stitch them so that we have fabric A in one corner, going just like this, and then once I stitch this, trim it and flip it, we will have fabric D in the opposite corner and the seams will run parallel just like we did on the other block.
I've got the one side stitch, so I'm going to trim just a quarter inch away from where I stitched. And I've got four more bonus half square triangle units that I can play with later. Just like we did before, we're going to finger pre uh oh, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. Well, poo, I made a boo boo. Do you see what I have here? I've got this lovely fabric C rectangle and fabric A is in the lower right hand corner pointing down into the right. And it should be in the upper right hand corner pointing up into the right. And I know that I can't recover from this because if I turn this 180 degrees, it is on the top, but it's pointing up into the left when it should be pointing up into the right. And I know that I can't do anything about this because if I put the other one on so that the fabric is going parallel, then this fabric is pointing down into the right when it should be pointing down into the left. So there's not really any way to recover from this. I'm gonna have to cut some new squares and some new rectangles and try again. But I will save these because who knows, maybe I will end up being able to use this in a future block. Now that I have everything recut out and remarked, let's try this one more time. We're going to lay out our fabric C rectangles and we want to make sure that our squares for fabric A are on the top. Remember, this is upside down for you. And when we stitch and flip, they should be pointing up into the right or for you down into the left, whatever that is. This is the right way according to the diagram. So I'm going to do my stitching on this again. Now we're going to trim again, but if we want to be extra careful, we can take a second, flip this back, make sure that it completes the fabric corner, this 90 degree corner perfectly, and make sure that it looks like your diagram and then trim. Remember when I'm flipping this over, I'm just going to finger press it because all I really want to do is get it to lay out of the way so that when I put the other square on in the opposite corner, I'm not catching this white in my seam. And we have more half square triangle units to play with later. Now we're going to grab our fabric D squares and we're going to lay them down so that the line that we drew, which is really faint, you're not able to see, but it is there. It is going parallel to this seam that we just took. We're going to do this on all four pieces. Just like we did before, we're going to trim a quarter inch away from that line that we stitched. Got some more bonus half square triangle units that we can play with later. We're going to grab our fingers, open these up, and then we'll come in and press it with a hot iron to get everything to lay really nice and flat so that we can put our block together. Now we have something that looks like this and we have something that looks like that. And what we're going to do is just sew them together. But our fabric orientation is very important. We need to make sure that we have a fabric, a triangle in the upper right 
portion of each of our two pieces and they need to be pointing up and to the right so that we have this little area right here where everything should be intersecting quite nicely. This red down here, spoiler alert, is going to end up causing a pinwheel in the inner part of our block. So we're going to take a seam right here four times to make four of these units. Now that all four of those are sewn, we're going to take them back to our mat and the instructions say to press these seams open. So I'm just going to run my finger right down the seam, press that open. We're going to do that on all four of these pieces. When I'm finger pressing, I'm not making the block lay as flat as I possibly can. All I'm really doing is nudging the fabric in the position I want it to be in and I convince it to stay there with some heat. The last step is to put all four of these together in a four patch orientation, but as with every other step of this block, fabric orientation is important. I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to set it up so that this little red triangle is pointing down and to the left. Then the next one I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. So now this little red is pointing up into the left. Then this bottom right quadrant is going to be pointing up and to the right. And the bottom left quadrant is going to point down into the right. So we're making a little pinwheel out of those reds and greens, but the green spoke of the pinwheel is extending out a little bit more. We're going to take a seam here, a seam here, and we will press both of these seams open and then we're going to join everything together and press that seam open too. I'm going to push the fabric to either side with my finger on both rows. And then use some heat to make it lay a little bit flatter. This just convinces it to stay open. And then from the top, we'll give it a little bit more heat just because we can. And now when I put these rows together, I want to make sure that the red is all coming together in the middle. And you'll notice we have a point here and a point here that we don't really want to lose. And so we can preserve that point a little bit by putting these together and pinning. So I'm going to take my pin. I can see where that point is on the back because I've pressed the seam open and I'm just going to put my pin right through the very tippy top of that point. I'm going to make sure it's coming through on the point on this side. Then I'm going to stab it through at the top tippy top part of that point on the other side. And I'm going to leave the pin straight because that will allow me to kind of shake the fabric out and adjust my raw edges a little bit while still keeping my point pinned and held together. From here, I can grab a couple more pins if I want to and just put them in the fabric, making sure that the raw edges are lined up. And if there are any other seams I want to nest, I can take care to do that too. And then I'll take this over to my machine and I'm going to stitch a quarter inch all the way along here. Okay. 
as I approach this center seam where those two points are, I pull my pin out and I leave it poked through both layers of my fabric. And I just use it to hold everything in place. And then once I have my needle in that seam, then I'll pull it all the way out because it's not going to go anywhere once I've started sewing the seam together. Now we'll open this up. We're going to nudge our seam completely open. We're going to nudge this seam open the entire width of the block using my finger. And then once it's kind of laid open a little bit, that's when we'll get this iron and come in and give it some heat so that the fabric stays open on the back. And then if I flip it over to the front, I can apply heat here. And that'll get everything to lay really nice. Now there is a little bit of bulk in this block and I find the best way to get a really flat block is to give it a good healthy dose of some best press. I like best press over steam because it adds a little bit of body to the fabric and it helps I find to reduce fraying over time. So it's just a nice alternative to steam, but you do what works for you. If you are not a starch or a best, best press fan and you've got something else that works, use that. Just make sure to do a really good press, steam press, starch press, whatever it is you do, make sure to add that moisture in here and give it a good, good press. That'll make it lay nice and flat. And then if you have a clapper, toss it on top of the block while the fabric is cooling from that heat press. And then we'll make sure that everything is crisp and super, super, super flat. This is our block. When it is all done, it should square up to 10 and a half inches. And this was absolutely an easier sew than block number two or even block number one. Very happy that we had an easier sew in this series. The only thing tricky about this block was just making sure that your fabric orientation was laid out just right. I'm going to take this block over to my cutting table, square it up, and set it aside with blocks one and two. And I will see you next week for block number four. I'll see you all then. Bye.